Paleontology is a science which is marked with misconceptions, which is, of course, not the fault of any of the scientists. I mean, most of the evidence of animals long gone are damaged, unfinished fossils which tell nothing but the creature's general shape, and sometimes even that turns out wrong. So can you really blame them for getting things wrong a few times? And of course it doesn't just apply to animals who we don't have much to compare to, such as dinosaurs, some of which lived hundreds of millions of years ago. It can even be animals who are rather young, evolutionarily speaking, and have many direct relatives in the modern world. Today we will talk about one of these creatures which has constantly had scientists second-guessing themselves, the short-faced bear, or more specifically the species Arctodus simus, who lived only 100,000 years ago across North America. Now, the short-faced bear is usually regarded as a super predator killing machine. It was larger than any living bear. Polar bears are regarded as the largest living land carnivores at 350 to 700 kilograms, Meanwhile, Arctodus could easily exceed that maximum, and are estimated to be as large as 800 kilograms, some specimens reaching as large as 900 kilos. They would be tall enough to, on all fours, look somebody in the eyes, and on its back two legs could stand nearly four meters tall. We're not even talking about Arctodus's South American cousin, Arctotherium, literally meaning bear beast, who could weigh one and a half metric tons and might be the largest mammalian terrestrial predator of all time. Quick side tangent, Arctodus was the animal that I was researching and studying for this video, but it's certainly possible that the conclusions I reach about Arctodus can be applied to Arctotherium. Both are technically short-faced bears. It's just not much attention has gone to Arctotherium, so I won't draw any decisive conclusions about it. Anyways, as it says on the packaging, that bear's face is short. In many depictions, the skull is pretty different from the omnivorous bears of today, so therefore they must have lived differently than their modern counterparts. This is further supported by the prehistoric bears' abnormally long legs. Hmm, I wonder why they had those. Arctodus's body doesn't seem to have many similarities with the stocky build of grizzlies and black bears, but instead the full-on carnivores of our age, like wolves and felines. It's been estimated the bears could run 50 to 70 kilometers per hour, and Arctodus skeletons from Alaska reveal the animals ate a great deal of meat, more than the omnivorous bears of today. When scientists began to put this together, the short-faced bear began to earn the name runner bear, the hypothesis being Arctodus would pursue large prey over the plains of prehistoric America and run these animals down, making them a massive predator unrivaled in its ecosystem. Now, time to get to the truth. It becomes apparent that Arctodus could not be a giant predator, as there are some problems with this idea. I mean, the bear was so large that this amount of moving mass could not make the turns needed to pursue its prey. Its leg bones also did not show the strength and thickness of actual pursuit predators. Indeed, an actual long distance chase would have been incredibly risky for this animal. But I mean, the bones don't lie. This was a long-legged, short-faced bear who consumed a much larger percentage of meat than usual. So instead, it was proposed this creature was a specialized scavenger. Instead of running, these long legs could be used to wander the lands, using a bear's revered sense of smell to track the scent of carcasses for miles. And when it got there to find the body killed by another predator, like a saber-toothed cat or a dire wolf, it could just intimidate them into surrendering. After all, could you defy a bear as tall as a horse? And when eating, it could use its short, strong skull to crack the bones of the animal, similar to hyenas and their strong, thick skulls. So there we have it. The short-faced bear was in fact no pursuit predator, but instead a scavenger who used its size and anatomy effectively. Well, that was a short video. But wait a minute. Hmm, some, something else has come up and, oh, I see now. This case goes much deeper than I expected. It looks like the truth won't do it for this situation. I present the mega truth. So unfortunately, this scavenger idea is also wrong. I know, shocking. How big is the throne of lies this bear sits upon? Well, to answer that, we have to look at the very name itself. 
you see the very title of short-faced bear is deceptive. Proportionally, these creature skulls aren't actually that short when compared to other bears. Its short face is in fact an optical illusion. It is in fact rather deep for a bear, not rather short. The additional height of the skull is what makes it look proportionally shorter, and I can see where the scientists were coming from on this one. I mean, if there's any name more lame and bland than short-faced bear, it's probably deep-faced bear. But the next misconception is even worse in my opinion. The long legs of this creature, from which so many theories have been created trying to explain their size, aren't even that long to begin with. I admit, on a skeleton, Artotis's legs do seem rather long, but compare it to the skeleton of a modern bear, and is it really any different? Due to bears being such furry and hefty creatures, looking at a living specimen can be hard to see that a bear's limbs are actually all rather long. Proportionally for a bear of its size, Arctotus does not have significantly longer limbs than other bears. This misconception is once more based on an optical illusion of sorts. As terrestrial predators become larger, their backs also become shorter. This rule applies to Arctotus, and its shorter torso relative to other bears is what makes its legs look much longer. Seeing these two glaring misconceptions about Arctotus, the image of this creature being a scavenging hyper carnivore quickly fall to pieces. The deep face doesn't really indicate that much about the animal being some sort of predator. In fact, the short faced bear's closest relative is the spectacled bear. Never heard of it? Well, that's to be expected. Spectacled bears are rather small bears who live in the Andes Mountains of South America, as mostly arboreal, herbivorous creatures. They too have the same deep face as their ancestors, yet only a mere 5% of their diet is composed of meat. Furthermore, the teeth of grown Arctotus individuals do not show the stress and wear of a hyena's teeth, indicating the animals did not in fact crack the bones of dead animals. Now, those isotopes showing that Arctotus ate a great deal more meat than regular bears can't be wrong as well, right? <sighs> I'm sorry, but they can. Like I said, the skeletons tested were both from Alaska. In modern times, bears living in Alaska, like the massive Kodiak bears, also eat a higher percentage of meat, but this is because their environment has a natural abundance of meat due to things like a huge supply of salmon in the region. Short-faced bears were literally found across the entirety of the Americas, so is it really safe to say these few specimens from one notable location represent the lifestyle of all of these animals? Of course not. It is much more probable these creatures instead lived as supersized but normal bears, having a varied omnivorous diet. So yeah, that's Arctotus for you. It was honestly just a huge omnivorous bear. Now, I would say a bear nearly 2 meters tall at the shoulders was awesome enough, but I can see where some might be disappointed by this creature's actual lifestyle. Of course, science isn't about reaching the most liked conclusion, but instead the one most accurate and truthful. Although cool, the short-faced bear as you and I knew it never existed to begin with. Sorry to end this one on such a bleak note, but I just could not think of a way to end this happily. Honestly, I feel I have a knack for making videos about some mysterious unique creatures which just turned out to be bigger versions of another animal. Uh, besides that, I of course thank the images and videos I used to make this content. And I thank you deeply for watching. See ya!